Uh, on behalf of the faculty, I just want to extend my warmest welcomes to all of you. Uh, it's always the most exciting time of the month for us to welcome in a brand new crop of leaders into the Trident family. And so uh, we all look forward to interacting with you, getting to know you, and, and seeing what great things you accomplish in and out of the classroom. Uh, so this section focuses on academic writing. Uh, it's one of uh, it's one of the points of concern for some students, especially who have been out for a while. Um, uh, it causes some anxiety. And so the goal of these next couple slides are just to relieve some of that anxiety and give you some direction to build momentum. So Michael mentioned it, um, but these first couple days, it's going to be really imperative for you to get the wheels going. And so I hope to provide a broad overview of what your faculty uh, will expect of you with writing and to relieve some of that anxiety for you. Uh, this first slide is just to, it's meant to, to frame your mindset for what the expectations are within academic writing and what and why and how and how is it different from what you might be used to within your military experience or business experience. So the three key differences that I kind of want that I want you to think about um, between business and slash military and academic writing are the goals of writing, the process of writing, and voice. And so when you're in the military, so the first one is the goals of writing. Uh, if you're going to graduate from a call it from a, an accredited institution, you're expected to have a high degree of written and oral communication skills. And so that is kind of what we're, we're helping, you, helping prepare you for upon graduation. So the first, um, the first uh, point that I want you to think about is the goal of writing. So when you're in the when you're in a business environment and when you're in a military environment, your goal of writing, the only purpose you're writing is for mission accomplishment and to accomplish objectives. The difference within what you're going to find in an academic environment is that that goal, the goal of writing, is to help you become a better communicator. And so there are some steps and some areas that we look for as your faculty to help you become a better thinker and to help you become a better writer and more effective writer. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um, within the military and, and you know, in business, you're, you're writing to accomplish this objective um, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And when you're in your academic classes, we're looking for your logic and rational thought development of your ideas. So we're not, so sometimes this comes out um, when you're answering questions as maybe a two or you know a one to two sentence or a one to three sentence reply to answer a question because you're in that mindset of answering the question and giving the conclusion as quickly and efficiently as possible. But that's not the only thing. That's actually not the most important thing that your faculty is looking for. It's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the reasons why and how you came to that to those conclusions your critical thinking skills and your logic and your th and your rational thought development. And so that takes more time and it takes more um, effort to lay out those arguments and to do the research uh, from different sources and uh, integrate the background readings into your experience to, to support your conclusion. So your faculty member is not just looking for the answer. We're not just looking for the conclusion. We're looking for your your reasons why your 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 the thinking and the and the evidence behind it and your logic and your rational thought development. The second the second um, area of um, that, that that's a challenge between or the difference between military and business writing versus academic writing is the process of writing. So when you're in a business environment or you're in a military environment, your superior would give you a a command or a or an objective to write up a memo, or write write this up, or write that up, uh, do a report. You pass it off to your superior. Your superior edits it, adds a couple things, passes it off to their superior. And before a decision is made, there's two or three hands that have touched this, you know, this document. That's different than what you're going to find here, and what your experience will be in an academic environment, because you are the single author of this document, of this assignment. So you have to go through the br brainstorming. You have to go through the um you have to go through the outlining and the editing and the drafting and the formatting and all those things take time 
And so you have to consider those elements when you uh, when you develop your time management um, your time management plan for for these classes. The third um, key difference is voice. So if you haven't noticed, especially in the military, you're big on uniforms and you're dressing the same, you're often talking the same, and sometimes that comes out in your writing. Often that that comes out in your writing, and so that causes some issues because it it raises some concerns for academic integrity issues. Some, so we want you to be aware of that. Your instructor will be looking for your independent, your independent understanding of these concepts. And so we're looking for you to paraphrase different ideas from a variety of different readings and background sources. We're looking for, your, for you to summarize uh, some of these, um, these ideas in your own words. So quotations are great, but your instructor will care more about your understanding of these concepts. And that is different than stripping out a quotation and sticking it in your paper. It's fundamentally different and it takes a lot more critical thinking and a lot more time and effort to summarize these different ideas in your own words and put them in. But that is what your instructor is looking for. And if you if you consider these things, you're gonna, it's you, you will reap the benefits of, of this program at, upon graduation, and I promise you, you'll become a more effective uh, communicator and contributor to your organizations. The next slide uh, is just meant to give you a general overview of academic writing structure. And so uh, this, this is not an all-inclusive slide. Uh, these are just some tips that I, as an instructor, I see uh, students kind of missing these points. And so as a writer that you may not have as much experience in an academic environment, or maybe you've been out for a while, uh, I hope that this gives you some direction to get the wheels going and build up that momentum early on. Um, and so there will be, there are more resources, more in-depth resources, like the ones that Michael mentioned. Uh, within the writing center and our resources drop down. So please make use of that. Um, but here, I just want to frame your mind into what we're looking for as, as ter in terms of structure and content. Uh, so the first, so there's, there's basically gonna be three main parts of your essay, the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And so your introduction is kind of like any presentation you may give, like a PowerPoint presentation. It's you always have a first slide that tells your audience what you're going to be talking about and why it's important. And so that's your introduction paragraph. You're just going to be basically pitch, just overviewing, presenting an overview of what you're going to be talking about and why it's important. So I want you to think about this because there's a there's an important statement in, in your introduction that your instructors look for, and it's called a thesis statement. Essentially, this tells your reader what the purpose is of your essay. And so a great way for you to know what your instructor is looking for is to look at the module learning outcomes. So every module, you have four modules, every module will have learning outcomes on the home page. So every module will have learning outcomes for every assignment on the home page. That is basically what your instructor is looking for, and that is what your that your your instructor will be looking for your or measuring your understanding of those concepts. And those are great statements uh, to put into your introduction, into your introduction paragraph, and to help ground you when you're answering these questions. So, you know, the, in addition to the learning outcomes, your assignments will have like three or four questions that you have to answer. Use those learning outcomes as like the lenses to to view those questions. So, address the learning outcomes through answering the questions. So th consider that with your thesis statement development uh, and definitely make use of those module learning outcomes because they, they, give you, they give you what your instructor is looking for on each assignment. From there, you've got your body paragraphs. And so one of my best, one of my, uh, the best recommendation, recommendations I could give you when you're first getting, off, getting going in your writing um, is, is uh, to break up those questions into sections and subsections using headers and subheaders. So just like on a PowerPoint presentation, you have headers that tell your reader or tell your audience what this, what this slide is about. Same thing within your essay, include a header, include subsections within that that make it 
overtly obvious to your instructor that you are addressing this part of the assignment. This is the key term that you're going to be addressing. Um, so not only does it provide some structure for you, for your essay, but it also makes it very obvious for your instructor that you are hitting all those points within your within your assignment. Um, and so, again, going back to the content of of your of your assignment, is your instructor looking for the conclusion? Uh, yeah, sure, we're looking for your answer to the question, but again, we're looking for the reasons why. And so when you draft your paragraphs, I kind of want you to think about aiming for about four to seven sentences. Uh, trust me, nobody's going to be counting your sentences out, but I think it's a good guideline for you because if you're going below that four sentence mark, then you're probably being a little bit too brief or concise and you're not exploring the topics or discussing the topics in detail. So make sure you're going back and citing some evidence um, from your background readings. Again, we're looking for APA citations. Um, and, and some evidence, some objective research and evidence to support your conclusions. And if you're going above that seven sentence mark, then you're probably going, you're probably uh, rambling on too much, or you could make that into a more concise structure to better highlight your ideas, or you just need to break up that longer paragraph into some more, some more paragraphs, into maybe two or three paragraphs. But you don't want to go on and on a, a page and a half of text, of block text. Um, you really want to break that up into small sections and subsections, include those headers, uh, and make it really easy for your instructor to, to pick out those main points. Um, if, you're, if you're struggling, again, I, I talked about the thesis statements above, uh, but if you're struggling uh, in, in terms of how to start a paragraph and what your instructor is looking for, I always, I always mention these points right here. Define the key term, Explain the application of the key term to the assignment, and then discuss why the concept is important to either the module learning outcome or just the class in general, um, specifically and with, with specific focus to that to the to the module learning outcome. So those three points, I think, if you cover those, that should get you to that four to seven mark. Include some evidence in there to support your ideas, and that's a great way of just getting started. This is not gonna be the perfect way. I can promise you that your instructor will give you feedback, but it's really important for you to take that feedback and then just continue to build, build upon it. Your instructor is not looking for perfection. In fact, you shouldn't expect, um, expect that of your instructor. We're here to make you better communicators and better critical thinkers. That's our value, that's, that's our objective, and so, when you look, when you explore these concepts in a variety of different ways by defining and explaining and discussing um, the value of these concepts, you're you're in essence exploring these concepts from a variety of different ways and you're thinking about them in different ways. So consider that when you're drafting up your your assignments. And then the conclusion paragraph is the last part of your ass assignment, and it, and it really just reflects. It's just kind of like a reflection of your introduction. Your introduction is telling your your audience what you're going to be talking about, why it's important, and your conclusion is going to be basically sta stating what you already have talked about and why that's important. And so they're, they're mirror images of, e of each other. Um, again, this is not uh, an all-inclusive, these are not all-inclusive suggestions. It's just simply to get the wheels going. And over time, you're going to receive more detailed feedback from your instructor become uh, to become a better written communicator, uh, a better writer, uh, and so I just highly suggest that you that you accept that feedback and you know with with willing and open arms. So I hope that helps. Again, refer back to the resources under the you know the writing resources under the resources tab if you need some more in depth um, advice. Always reach out to your instructor because we love hearing from you and we love to to support you in this process. Honestly, it is it is our honor to to serve you. Uh, so please make use of us.